everybody, Haley here. And excuse me while I take a quick selfie looking all adventurous. <laughs> there, hope you like it. Getting likes is the most important thing, as you know. How else would you know if you're doing what's right? Oh, oh you do like it. Well, that's great, that's so sweet. Anyway, today we're learning about wisdom. I know, right? I like wisdom too. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Wisdom can help you know where to go, what to do, who to be friends with, what to wear, like this super chic leather jacket. Yeah, some love for the jacket. And how about this hat, am I right? <laughs> oh, uh oh, that's no good, huh? Well, this is my favorite hat. Well, the phone knows what's best, I suppose. How about this one? Oh, oh good, this one's better. <laughs> I'm always afraid this hat makes my head look too small. This girl I know, Iris, says I have a small head, <laughs> but I guess I'll forgive her. Anyway, huh? what? You don't think I should forgive her? <sighs> well, what should I do? Get revenge? <laughs> you like revenge? Well, are, are you sure? I, I, I don't think revenge is very wise. I thought you were smart, phone. <sighs> I need to rethink this whole relying on likes thing. And as we'll learn in today's story, there's a whole lot we need to rethink. Oh, be quiet. Back in a minute. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 12, Verse 2. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder, and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the Son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12.2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play, 
we run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in PE. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. You can make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from the Apostle Paul. I think I'll turn you off for a while. You're a smartphone, not a wise phone. The Apostle Paul wrote, Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. A lot of people in the world do things just because everyone else is doing it. But Paul wrote that we shouldn't live the same way as the world. We should think differently. We should stand out even. When Jesus was here, he showed us a different way to live, a way where we don't just like, but love everybody, even our enemies. People were drawn to him because he was so different. And when we believe Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for us and came back to life in three days, the Holy Spirit will help us to change from the inside out. So. If I'm being wise, I'm not making choices based on what the world wants. It shouldn't even be about what I want. I should make choices based on what God wants. And God wants me to love Him and love others. But listen, completely changing your way of thinking takes time. It's something you and God will be working on your whole life. So here's the one thing to remember today. Never stop growing in wisdom. Wisdom is a treasure you'll always be hunting for. And while you're hunting, ha, 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 you'll need a cool hat. It's my favorite. I'll see you around. <laughs>